Rana, it's a great pleasure to meet you finally personally, having read and greatly admired you from having read your book, an early draft of your book, mm -hmm. Women Are Not Allowed to Dream. Coming from Saudi Arabia, I have the impression that unless you're rich and male, mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia is not a very nice place to live. Is that a fair uh, assessment? Yeah, li like a woman and also like a theist is like the most worst place to live. Um, for women, we don't have any dream there. We all that time independent of about our family. My father, my brother, my husband. It's like I, I can't do anything in this country. I need all that time the permission from them. Um, and even if if my situation is really bad, if I get hit or if I have like something bad with my family, I can't call the police or ask for help. Yes. Yeah. And when you were not allowed to dream, what dreams did you actually have? First. Did you did you dream to come to a free country? Yeah, to live in a free country, to have my freedom life, to be an atheist and not to behave like I am a Muslim, but from inside I am atheist. To respect me, I don't want to believe in any kind of religion or God. I want to live like in peace without any forcing to be someone else and to study nuclear physics, to meet you and yeah. Now, is it right to say that you didn't really know that there was such a thing as an atheist, that it was possible to be an atheist when you yeah, were growing up? I was completely shocked when I saw the word atheist in, in English. I take it to Google and I translate it to Arabic and even in Arabic language, what does mean? Mulhid, that's what I did. And then I search and then I was completely shocked. There is people in our life, they don't believe in, in, in God or they don't have any religion. It's like something so huge for me. It was impossible to believe that anybody could yeah. not believe in God. Yeah, and yeah. from this moment I start to search and in our Arabic uh, Twitter or Facebook or media, if you start to search about atheists, the first uh, suggest or the first book you, they put it, you have to read it, it's your book, uh, God Delusion. And you yeah. read that in Arabic? I read it in Arabic. Uh, it was like it's illegal to have it, even to download it. I have to change my VPN and I make like trip to get the book. And when I get the book, I, I download it in my laptop and then I put it in my, my flash memory. And I keep my flash memory it's like drugs or something really dangerous. And I was when I read it in my room, I close the door, I put something from the door and I open my laptop and I start to read, read. <laughs> Read, read. <laughs> what would have happened to you if you'd been caught reading it? Uh, my family really struck with religion. They will not even because the name in Arabic, God delusion. It's if someone see it from my family, uh, I think I will be like hit, and they they take all my contact laptop uh, handy or anything like from this, and I will be isolate in, in the house and I will not allow to go out or to contact anyone until they be sure that I am Muslim and they don't have any other idea. And do you still feel threatened even living in Germany? Yeah, threatened because I talk about free freedom of religion and I talk about human rights. It's coming from the people they are living here in Germany. They are also refugee, they come from the other country. Yeah. So you are being threatened by fellow refugees who have, yeah. who have come out of Islamic countries and they yeah. come to a free country, Germany, yeah. and they still threaten you? Yeah, because I talk about this topic in, in, in Arabic language, another language, and I am really like support women to be free also, not only, not only because of the religion. So these <laughs> refugees in Germany who threaten you, do they not realize they're now living in a free country? I think they don't want to, to realize that. They want to stay in the same idea. Why don't they go back home? <laughs> it's not my decision. No. I hope they will be really struck with this kind of people. When, when I see people, they, they threat the other and they are dangerous and they don't respect the freedom. They don't respect the right here. Why, are, why they are here? Uh, do your family know where you are? Uh, they know that I am in, in Germany, but they don't know which city. So do you keep that secret? Yeah, and also I block my information with the help with police and the immigration office here. So anyone who take my name and try to find where I am live, he, he can't. And what would happen to you if they did find where you are? Um, before three or two weeks, I get information that my brother tried to find someone by dark net to kill me here in Germany. To kill you? Yeah. Your because brother, your yeah. own brother would my kill you? My own brother. I, it was like, I was completely 
uh, sad. I, I was crying when I go to the police. I'm not surprised. Yeah, and I, I, I make like complaint, and she's, I see his name in the beginning like really like a criminal, and this like so much. It was so feel for for me. Did you love your brother when you were in yeah, Saudi Arabia? Yeah, before before I become an atheist yeah. and before everything in my mind changed, we was really close, your sister and brother. We was talking, getting to restaurant, doing like something together. But after I move and after I start my life here, he not accept that. I bring the shame for the family. Because that is incredibly sad. Yeah, and it's really troubling that a belief, a religious yeah. belief, can actually take over somebody's mind, can parasitize yeah. somebody's mind to the extent that he would kill his own, his want to kill his own beloved sister. Mm -hmm. That is deeply disturbing and it just shows the power, the evil power yeah. that Already, religion yeah. can exert over a vulnerable human mind. I'm shocked by that. Right. And I'm, I'm very sorry for you, but I greatly admire your courage, the courage with which you are standing up to this. Yeah, thank you. At present, your book, A Woman Is Not Allowed to Dream, mm. is only published in German and what other languages? And France. And, and French, it's yeah. ge German and French. Uh, not in Arabic. Not in Arabic, yeah. Uh, well, not English. Not English. Not in um, now it seems to me a great pity that it's not published in English. Mm -hmm. um, how well has it sold in the German edition? It was like the bestseller in Spiegel bestseller. A Spiegel bestseller. Uh, yeah, it was in the for three, four, five months. In the beginning, was bestseller. Well, then it must be published in English. Yeah. Oh, that's that's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, so. Uh, we must tr try to make efforts to find an, a, an English publisher mm -hmm. of, a, of a bestseller in Spiegel. <laughs> yeah. Well, congratulations on that. Yeah. What about other languages? Um, you know, if there is like publisher house, they get interesting about my story, they contact me or contact my agent or contact my publisher house in Germany. Yes. And we start to make to, to deal with that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, other languages other than English? You haven't thought you haven't tried yet, or, or um, I think they try for all the language, but now we are successful with the France, and I th I think also it will be in Ch uh, Czech Republic. I don't okay. know. I'm not really sure. Right. Yeah. Um, what about other languages spoken in the Islamic world, like Indonesian, Urdu, Farsi, that kind of thing? Um, maybe it's. I think it's important because of my, my story or my book. Um, I met two Saudi women here in Germany and they told me after we get touch in your story and we see you on the internet or we see your video, we have the power to get out from our country and be free like you. And I think if, if you read my book, you really be touched and if the women like they are afraid or they are, they think we can't change our life, we can't do anything and we have to accept this kind of uh, society and we have to accept what they want from us. But you see it's, it's possible, it's not something really, yes. yeah. So if we think back to your time in Saudi Arabia and other Islamic countries, um, I'm sure you're not alone, there must be lots of others like yeah. you. Uh, who would who need to escape? Yeah. Um, do you have some sense of how many atheists there might be in Saudi Arabia? Um, it's not impossible to know, of course. But but um, did fear? you talk to any of your friends while he was there? I about think it? a lot, but we can we can really be sure because they can show them identity or we, they can say uh, we are atheists. I think we I can say like three or four millions. We can, we can say that. Well, we, we know, don't we, that the Arabic translation of the God Delusion, which you read, mm -hmm. in uh, da you downloaded, mm -hmm. has been downloaded, I think, 13 million times. Wow. Um, the Arabic translation, yeah. and I think 3 million of those in Saudi Arabia, which is a very significant figure. Yeah, yeah. It does suggest something very encouraging. I've heard similar stories from Iran, mm -hmm. uh, that there's a very large groundswell, a very large underground mm -hmm. of non-religious people 
because in Iran for us if you start to, to, to if you start to search or if you start to open your mind and to know other kind of thought you will start with important book and for for us it was like really your book in the beginning and I think also in Iran if they want to start with the book they start with God delusion also yes well the Richard Dawkins Foundation is uh, starting a new project mm -hmm. to translate several of my books not just the God delusion mm -hmm. into Arabic Farsi, Indonesian, and Urdu yeah. uh, for free download. Mm -hmm. uh, so not not to be published as as pa paper books, but but to be to be downloaded free. So we hope that that will help yeah. people who were who still are in the predicament that you were in. So thank you very much. Thank you.